sometimes they use the term uh, counselor and with some uh, people they use the term alderman what is the difference between that well the alderman system is a system which we inherited from our, our first no second set of colonial um, governors the british the british created classes um, and the british in their governance system created at local government level the specific title of alderman and essentially it means that this is an experienced counselor an experienced counselor is sometimes also called an elder woman so that is also possible um, although mostly they they just use alderman it means that this counselor first of all you get that distinctive name because you've got a number of years of experience two or three terms you've served more than one term Secondly, when you fulfill a further function within the council, you are not only a councillor, you are also a chair of a committee or a deputy mayor or a member of the mayoral committee or the executive committee or the mayor. There is a system by means of which a set of points are calculated. So you get points for every year that you have served as a councillor. You get points if you've served over and above as a councillor, you've served as a chair or a deputy chair in a committee. And you get points if you've served as a deputy mayor or a mayor. And obviously you get more points if you serve as mayor or deputy mayor than for the other purposes. So that is then calculated and finally it gives you a, a total of points and when you get to the required number of points it's a bit complicated I, I don't want to go into too much detail then you are given the honor the status of being called an alderman um, in that way that gives you a type of distinction that shows that you are a long serving and a person with secondly who have done some work over and above just being a counselor that is the title of alderman do counselors get paid yes they do um, there's a lot of debate about that prior to the 1994 uh, advent of democracy in south africa counselors were also given some form of compensation for costs mostly um, just in the in the last years before 1994 there, there, there were also um, a number of shall we say increased requests for remuneration for counselors but after 1994 that was um, in actual fact made much more pertinent and now councillors get substantive salaries and that actually is sometimes regarded as a problem because in many cases these councillors have no alternatives they have no other professional qualifications and when they start to serve on council that becomes their not only their office in the in the sense of that they they fulfill that office it becomes their career and in many cases they have nothing to fall back on and that means that they cling to power at all costs um, and that creates perverse incentives for them to do things in their own interest rather and than in the interest of the electorate so the councillors, many of the councillors that served in the undemocratic South Africa, which was not a good system, however, they were not paid and they served because they were, in that sense, public servants. Now we have councillors who are, many of them are career councillors with no alternatives and therefore they will cling to power and in actual fact, it's a, the tragedy is that in South Africa, when we see some of these uh, politically motivated assassinations in some of the provinces, it's because people are so 
serious, are so, shall we say, um, adamant to become counselors that they will, they will actually kill their own party uh, comrades in order to get a position on council. 